Morning, so it's Dave here and uh, I've had a really exciting morning. Um, if you saw some of my last videos, you will have noted that, if I show you here, I got my BMS system with the Arduino or Arduino um, working, just on the bench here, plugged into the batteries. Um, I've extended that now. Uh, you've seen the other videos of me making the cables and I've now got the high voltage pack wired up um, through the original fuse, through the original current meter, through the original relay board from the Nissan Leaf. And now that's all wired up to the car. So coming over to the car, in here, you will again already know that I had the inverter and motor installed. Um, but I've done lots of other stuff. You see there's a ton of cabling here now. So I've just rested a 12 volt battery in. So that's brought the car back to life. That's been, where am I? Uh, that's been quite entertaining getting the car back to life because uh, a battery was flat so it didn't work. Then my earth was rubbish, so stuff didn't work again. Then the power steering didn't work. And again, that was another earthing issue because obviously I'd ripped all this stuff out. So um, lots of wires just were just loose and I've had to just make new earths for everything. So that's good. The car's working, which is great. And uh, going back in here, here's my original Arduino that controlled the RX-8. So that makes all the power steering work, gets rid of all the errors on the dashboard, all that kind of stuff, and it's going to handle the throttle control as well. Um, I'm actually going to use both throttle controls. Here's the second redundant one in the new new version, just for safety's sake. And uh, I put a header on here as well. They used to be soldered straight onto the serial, um, but it's just a bit more flexible having a header on there, so that's all good. So that's still controlling the car. I've then got the 12 volt battery powering the car and then over here I've got the another Arduino and this one's controlling the inverter so again if you if you had seen my videos from last year you'll see that I got the motor spinning so what the whole point of all this test is is to get the motor spinning but in the car you know uh, it's the next great step and then all this wiring that's here if I can get down here all this wiring loom that's going into the inverter there we go, so in the inverter, all this wiring loom coming up here to my Arduino here to simplify it all because I want to connect the CAN bus from the inverter to the CAN bus of the car so that can all happen here. Um, over here I've got two switches, uh, this is 12 volts on for the inverter and this is ignition on for the inverter but of course they both exist over here as well in the car so again I can just simplify all this I can take the code from this Arduino and merge it with my RX-8 code and also then get the throttle response to actually send the inverter the right throttle commands. At the moment, if you remember this code, it just waits 10 seconds, well I actually made that 20 seconds now, then it spins the motor for a tenth of a second and then turns off. So that's all that does, but it's like a proof of concept that I can get it to work. So all this is wired up and um, I'm happy, very happy, because uh, I did try it this morning and it works. So what I'm gonna do, I might actually just do it again now. I'm gonna put the camera on a tripod and uh, you'll just see, you'll just see me switch all the things on, wait the 20 seconds, get the motor to spin. The car's not in gear. Uh, I was that close, that close to testing it with the car in gear. And that would have been an absolute disaster because well, it would have just driven out the carriage door. Um, obviously with only a 10th of a second of, of um, uh, torque, it probably wouldn't have gone very far, but um, not in gear, that's a big, big bonus that I remembered that. A few other bits and pieces to mention. Um, I've stripped out the boot here, so all the lining is just there now. And uh, starting to plan where these batteries are gonna go. I've got my original mock-up box over there for the batteries in the front. Um, so I've really started to plan what's happening, where things are gonna go. It's my original high voltage lead still here from the original RX-8. They're disconnected at the moment, so don't worry that they're just lying there. Um, and what I'm also going to do as I go around the car is I'm going to kind of detail it, if that's the right word, just clean it and improve things as I go around the car. So one thing I'm doing to begin with is the exhaust pods, these, um, which are down here, no direct eight, kind of exist here and on the other side. Um, they obviously don't have any exhaust popping out of them anymore, so um, I want to put like a black mesh almost just to seal them off because it was just a hole, looked a bit rubbish, and also they're faded plastic. So I'm going to spray them nicely and then lacquer them, make sure they're all nice and tough and strong. Put a kind of a black mesh, as I say, just to 
stop it being a hole, basically. Um, and I might do that to other bits of the car. Some of the um, plastic on the car is a bit faded, so I can uh, just improve that as I go around. But that's what I'm going to do as I go around the car, just to make uh, improvements. It's in pretty good nick, but it can be a little bit better as well. Some of the paintwork isn't, isn't great. So let me put it on um, a tripod and let's get this test going. Right, so I've got the camera set up to try and show as much as I can in the shot at the same time. Uh, first I'm going to turn the car on, then I'm going to turn the ignition on for, sorry, the power on for the inverter, then the ignition for the inverter. That's going to give me 20 seconds before it sends the control codes to spin the motor. I'm going to go in those 20 seconds, turn the high voltage on, which will do the relay and the pre-charge relays. Um, so I'll be sat there waiting, fully powered up. Um, this will spin. We should hopefully hear it spin on the camera and test over. Okay. Radio's on. So that's the ignition working. Okay, we're going to turn the inverter on. You get no signal, no nothing that that's happened. We're going to let that make sure it's powered up. I'm then going to turn on my Arduino here. It's going to give me 20 seconds now to get the high voltage on. High voltage on, pre-charge done. Let's wait. All right. I don't know if you heard that, but it spun and a stop spinning. So really chuffed to, um, you know, oh, late last year, wasn't it, when I got all that working in its individual components. And I guess they're still all individual components, but all together. <laughs> so anyway, to get that working, I'm well chuffed. That's the first time it's spun in the car as well. Now, final bit of exciting stuff is I finally chose a scissor lift for the car. It's a two and, a, two and a half ton scissor lift, about 1100 quid. Um, I got a lot cheaper than actually the other ones I'd found and, and kind of just to secure, because I think there, there were some I found that were really cheap and you're thinking, God, I want to work under that. I still will have axle stands. I'll probably still put wheels under the car because I'm just scared to death of these things and uh, being trapped under the car and nobody knowing. So um, the good thing there is that's coming on Thursday. So I can lift the car up and of course I can then put it in gear. And I can see the wheels moving. That's going to be the next test. Uh, and then after that, it's going to be simplifying all this stuff under the bonnet, simplifying it all, getting the code written to use the throttle so I can blip the throttle, get the batteries in, and then take it on the road. That simple. One other thing, actually, one other thing that I thought of is, it's likely my mother-in-law <laughs> might buy this car off me, oddly. Um, she lives in the Isle of Wight, and um, so it doesn't need a huge range. Now, if this does, well, the original spec was like 100 miles in the Nissan Leaf. If, if this does, let's say, 50 miles, um, which I think it'll do quite easily, to be fair, then it's going to be perfect for her in the Isle of Wight. Now, what I've been thinking is this thing, this is the power distribution module. So this basically is the charger, as far as I can, um, far as, in my language. Um, and it also charges the 12 volt battery. But I'm thinking if, and I'm going to work it with her, if she's only ever charging it at home and uh, it's just doing little little trips on the Isle of Wight, then that doesn't need to live in the car. Normally it would, you'd have it in the car, you'd plug it in, it would charge, and it would be charging the 12 volt battery. But I have somewhere a spare DC to DC 12 volt charger that I could use to charge the 12 volt battery. And that massive big heavy thing that I was going to put in the boot can actually just live outside, build a box for it, build cooling for it that it needs, and it can be plugged into the external charger and then a three pin plug, and then just make an adapter that plugs into the RX8 and charges it when you need. Um, really tempted to do that. There's a whole nother complexity of thing that I wanted to build and put in the car that I think, well, actually, I don't need. I don't need that in the car at all. So. I really, really think I'm going to do that. That's going to be outside the car. It does obviously mean you are limited. You can only then charge the car at home with that. Um, am I bothered at this point? I'm not sure I am. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.